No. No. Okay. So this is a. Uh, it's gonna be a. You know, a Kevin Samuel's tribute, yeah. Because you know, I don't believe enough people are putting respect on his name, so. I think uh, we have to speak about this man, yeah? Marbles. Shells. Now, where did I get these shells? I think these ones, yeah, I got these in Thailand, and I got the smaller ones from Gambia. Marbles and shells. Okay, let's get started. Yeah. So, when I first see Kevin Samuels. I'm just watching YouTube, what they call the Black Manosphere, and then this man appeared. Yeah? I was like, whoa. Image was different, it was clean cut, suited and booted, yeah? Sophisticated. I said, yeah, I like this man. I like this dude. You know, I like the image he portrays as a black man, yeah? Because, uh, you know, the image now, you know, of a black man is like, he's a criminal, he's a drug addict, he's a drug dealer, you know, he keeps smoke, <laughs> he keeps smoking marijuana, yeah? Yeah? He's smoking marijuana. And, uh, you know, Kevin Samuels came with a different image, a clean cut image. And it kind of blew everyone away. And uh, he, like quickly he moved up. So, I mean, I don't know what he'd done before YouTube, but what I've heard, you know, you know, from listening to O'Shea Chuck Jackson is that, you know, people, you build up a following on say Facebook and then you bring the following to YouTube. You cannot go to YouTube and just blow up big, yeah? So I, I don't really know how Kevin Samuels came into uh, YouTube, but the dude just blew up, blew up quickly, yeah? Dude blew up quickly, yeah? And, uh, you know, it was amazing, and he's getting money. I never see, I never see a man get money like that. I see O'Shea Jim Jackson getting money. I see Ramel Amir getting money, yeah? I never see anyone getting money like uh, like uh, Kevin Samuels, yeah, which obviously caused a lot of jealousy, yeah. So they started to diss him, yeah. But what really pissed them off is when he came up with this term, uh, high value man. When he said that, it was, it was over for him because you know you know black men you know I can't even say we. Black men are very competitive, yeah? And very jealous and envious. So when he said a oh, high value man, a oh, high value man? What that mean, nigga? You more than me? They took it personally. <laughs> they took it personally as an affront to them. Like he was saying he's better than them. And that's when it, that's when his problems all started. Yeah? When he said high value man, they all started coming after him. And uh, it was very sad. So I was listening to La listening to him last week Thursday. I mean, I don't listen to him all the time. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's brilliant at his job. Yeah, but it's the subject matter that he's covering. Yeah, like why am I wasting my time? Yeah, why am I wasting my time listening to him speak about them? That's that was my attitude. I saw him come out of that environment. I saw him Fresh and fitch. Fetch and fit, fresh. Them dudes, yeah? 
sun will not show. It's nice to see him out of that environment. Yeah? It's the same thing. It's still talking about women and girls. Yeah? Then uh, I saw him on... What's that dude's name? No Jumper. Yeah. I saw him on No Jumper. It was good to see him on No Jumper because he was out of the environment of just talking about certain women. And, he, you know, he was in a, in a musical environment. And it was really good to see. And he got on well with the host and his friends. And uh, it was a good interview, yeah? So I wanted to see Kevin Samuels more out of the uh, environment of only speaking about um, certain women, yeah? Because he was trying to do good. He was bad. Because like he's saying harsh things, which is seen like he's dissing, he's dissing black women. Yeah, so I wanted to see him out of that environment, yeah? So, yeah, sometimes he's done some good, some good shows, you know, where he traveled, yeah? So he was saying he wanted to go to New York, so he went to New York. He said he wanted to go to New York because he wanted to wear his coats. He has some nice coats and it's too hot in Atlanta where he's from. So he wanted to go to New York you know, to wear his coats, yeah? So... The brother would be out there, yeah, suited and booted, wearing his masks, wearing all kinds of different attire, looking good, yeah. Then also he went to um, California, where I saw some amazing sights, you know. You know, you'd be walking along, people would recognize him, be friendly, yeah, which is really good, yeah, because most people are not born famous, you become famous, yeah. You know, unless you're royalty, you're not born famous. You know, and people walking up to him, being nice, polite. I saw you, I watched your show, it's really nice. You know, you're putting so much work and you're getting love back, yeah? Then I see some crazy sight, was in a shopping mall, a woman was walking along, yeah? And uh, she's got a, a pram or a stroller, as they call them in America. This woman is walking around with two dogs, yeah? Like there's some psychosis going on. Yeah, where somebody would rather have two dogs in a pram than be with a man and start a family. Yeah, so you know, Kevin spoke on that, but he didn't really go in. You know, he didn't go in too tough. Yeah, but you got this black woman walking around with two dogs in a pram. Now, why isn't this seen? I mean, not just black women. A lot of women do this in America. But why isn't this seen as like some kind of mental disorder? I mean, even at the beginning of the year. The end of last year, the beginning of this year, 2022, even the Pope had to speak out. What did the Pope say? He said, babies, you know, humans need to have families again and stop trying to replace babies and humans with, with pets. Even the fucking Pope had to speak out about this situation, yeah? So this woman's walking, you can tell she's got a good job, she's got money, yeah? And she's got two dogs in a pram. That is nuts. That is nuts. Yeah? Two fucking dogs in a pram. And it's like, it's normal. No one's like, oh, look at her. Yeah? It's totally normal. Yeah? So anyway, um, yeah, so he wanted to go to um, yeah, New York, California, yeah? Uh, how can I say this? Yeah. Um, okay, I'm gonna say this. So he just kind of said he had the VX. Yeah, just matter of factly, didn't really put too much stress on it. Yeah. So he got the VX. Yeah. So he can travel. Yeah. We'll go into that later. Yeah. So it was a good show. Yeah, he was traveling up and down. And then uh, yeah, he went back to Atlanta. Yeah, doing his shows. Yeah. But like I said, yeah, I never see I never seen anyone make money like this. And then also what he would do as well, um, you know, if he, if enough money wasn't coming in, you know, he'd stop the show. And he had this way where he spoke and people would, would send more super chats. 
It didn't seem like a beggar or a scrounger. It was just like, look, I'm providing this service. Yes? You know, you have to you have to pay. It's not free. Yeah? I'm a high value man. So you have to pay. And then people send more super chats, send more money. Yeah? Amazing, made so much money. Three hundred, three hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. Yeah, I'm sure one time I saw it. Got like a thousand dollars in one show from one person. So obviously, you know, this made the other guys upset. Yeah. Um. You know, like I said. Um. So like on Thursday, I was um I was watching him. Like I said, I don't watch him all the time because of the subject matter, yeah? Because now, you know, where we are now, you know, where we are now, you know, we've got a situation now with uh, investing, yeah? With cryptocurrencies. Now we're now into a time where, you know, cryptocurrencies are merging. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to put all my energy hearing the same story about this girl and dating. You know, we've got to be listening to what's happening in finance, in cryptocurrency. Yeah. So, you know, we've got a dude here called um, Ohin Omara. Yeah. Who's got a show called um, The Crypto Gang. Yeah. And, you know, this is what really upsets him too. Instead of black men being interested in investing and making money, we're listening to the same old story. She done this, she done that. Yeah? How to date and get this money. Go on this course to get more girls. You know, so, you know, that was kind of my mindset too. So I didn't listen to um, Kevin all the time. Yeah? And then shows aren't for five minutes, are they? you got to sit down for two hours, four hours, whatever the case may be. Yes, but anyway, I was watching him last week, Thursday. I was watching the brother last week Thursday and it was a good show oh yeah a woman rang up some total idiot yeah I mean I think some of these women only rang up you know to hinder what he was doing you know yeah just sabotage it mash it up mash it up mash it up mash it up yeah just to hinder the brother he's trying to do something progressive and so she so they want to destroy it so she rang up she was being totally stupid yeah and uh, I think in the end he had to get rid of her. She was smiling. So I knew it was deliberately. She's deliberately trying to hinder, sabotage the show. Yeah? Because the brother's making progress. Yeah? And there's something in her genetics that tells her she has to spoil it. That's her duty in life. You know, like a black widow spider. Yeah? To destroy the males of her species. Yeah? And there was another woman. Yeah? She was smiling. She's a pretty lady smiling but she was so defensive <laughs> he couldn't get past her she was too defensive yeah everything she he said was like a big issue she had like this big wall of defense up he couldn't get past her so he was polite she went then like i said that first there was a light-skinned lady she liked complexion she was very defensive but she was always smiling to seem more pleasant yeah but apart from the smile, she was just too defensive. She had too many walls, too many barriers. He couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't get with her. And the other one was just some jackass. Yeah. So, so yeah, the show finishes, or whatever the case may be. I think that was the fifth of May, and then um, maybe the next day I saw something about Kevin Samuels died. Yeah. So I was like, I don't pay no attention. They're so jealous of this guy's progress. You know, they're saying he's, di he's died. He's dead when he didn't die. I remember back in the day, that happened to Mr. T. Mr. T was alive and they say he died of cancer. Yeah? So oh, they're saying he's dead. He's not dead. Forget it. Don't even listen to that. I've got things to do. Yeah? And then I heard it again. And then, you know, uh, tune into the... Um, the star report sometimes yeah and star star was saying though the caption on the video was he died from cocaine and 
What's this drug? This is a legal drug, but people take it and they die. What's this drug called now? Cocaine. Anyway, there's some drug, man. Yeah? I mean, like when I used to listen to Alex Jones two years ago, he was always on about this drug that's killing people, a legal drug that kills people. Anyway, so Star had it as the caption, yeah? So I said, hold on, this is this thing is looking serious, man. Everyone's saying that he's died. So I've done some research. I went to Wikipedia. Uh, I don't think Wikipedia was quite saying it yet. They kept coming up and up and up. Yeah, then I realised the brother Ray has passed. Everyone's saying he's passed. Yeah, it's not looking like they're just jealous and evil or whatever the case may be. He looked like his brother's really passed. Then I saw, saw, I think I checked Star again. And then it was talking about how the girl, he was supposed to be um, making love to a girl and then he dropped down dead on top of her or something. Yeah. So that's well, uh, well, at least they can't say he's gay now, isn't it? If he's made love to a woman, he died on top of the woman. Well, now they, they got to quash this story about he's gay. Yeah? Not that there's anything wrong with being gay. Yeah? Well, they're saying he's gay. Yeah? So, whatever the case. Yeah? So this is real. This brother's really died. Oh, I just, I just, I couldn't believe it, man. Yeah? But then, you know, apart from what Star was saying, he took cocaine laced with fentanyl. Yeah, that's the one. Fentanyl. There's a legal drug called fentanyl that's fucking everyone up, yeah? So then they said, I read that he had a heart attack. He died from a heart attack. And then I said, yeah, that sounds very familiar. Yeah? All of a sudden, everyone's just dropping dead with, with heart attacks. Even earlier this week, maybe Monday, there was a story in the UK about, I think it was 14 years old, a 14 year old footballer. You know, some, he had an African name, yeah? Just dropped dead. Yeah? Why is everyone just dropping dead from heart attacks now? Hmm. I'm suspicious, yeah? So anyway, it turned out. So I started to Google, yeah? And then I saw even BBC. I said, wow. I didn't realize he was that big. I didn't realize he was that famous. I mean, even the BBC are covering that Kevin Samuels died. Yeah? And, you know, I just, I was just kind of shocked. I was shocked. Yeah? I think it's getting a bit warm now. Hold on a moment. I'll take this dressing gown off. Yeah? Silk. Yeah? So classy, yeah? like Kevin Samuels, yeah? Now today's quite warm in the UK, yeah? It's supposed to be British summertime, it's not really hot, but it's, uh, it's getting warm. Okay. Okay, where was I? What's going on? 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 And that tune, what was that tune you used to play at the beginning? La 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 da, if you're wrong or right. Yeah, Kevin was class, man. Come on, he had his lights, yeah. He had his aftershave, his perfume, yeah. It was sophisticated, yeah. There's no one like him. And then everyone started trying to copy him, yeah. So their show would be better than his. Not even so their show would be better with him. It's like when Kevin came, that like, everyone was irrelevant, yeah. Kevin came, and he made everyone irrelevant. There was so much hatred to him. It was ridiculous. When Tommy Tommy Sotomayor was saying, oh, Tommy Sotomayor was saying he's gay. He was looking, he was going through videos, looking for stuff to say, yeah? And he must have found some video, yeah? 
apparently, Buddha told me he was looking at some man. He went, "Oh my!" I mean, it was funny, yeah, but it was ridiculous. A man, dick, can you imagine a man going through for hours and hours and hours, going through videos, stopping and starting to look for something to try and destroy um, Kevin Samuels? Oh my! Oh my! Yeah. So um, yeah, it was all jealous, man. All jealous, all and that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, you got something called the black manners, black manners fear. Yeah, There's something called the black manners fear, like everybody uh, setting up their channel. Well, it's supposed to be black men fighting together, striving together. You know, to try and better our race, better our situation, put a positive spin on our race. Yeah. At the end of the day, they're all just competing against each other. Just uh, anyone who does well, they just turn it against him. Everyone turned against, everyone turned against Kevin Samuels because it's like he blew everyone out of the water. He blew them all away. It was all about him now. Everybody was watching this show. Everybody was talking about him. Yeah, he had the numbers. Yeah, he had the numbers. Everyone tried to compete with him. Yeah, Tommy was vexed. Tommy was angry. Casting him, saying the most disrespectful things, yeah. Tommy was saying it, yeah. I said, we were trying to copy, you know, Kevin's um, style. No one could come close, yeah. And you know, they all they 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 focus, they're, they're, they're happy that the guy's died, man, yeah. They were saying, you know, people are dancing on his grave. Some of the comments they're saying, people are saying bad stuff, yeah. And uh, like I said, yeah, one of those people, you know, well, was um, Star Report, Star Troy, yeah. I couldn't believe what he was saying. I mean, and he said he, he said he's never met him. I've never met the man, there, but the level of venom that was coming from Star. What was he saying? Was it a gay encounter? Did a boy jump up? Peanut butter in the booty hole? All kinds of madness. Just madness. Yeah? Just madness. Yeah? It's a lot of bad things, man. Very bad things. Yeah? And I checked out some of the shows. I think some people... You know, they were just using Kevin Samuel's name to get views, but they didn't even really speak about him. Uh, what, what, Fresh and Fitch, what happened on their show? They was talking, yeah. Uh, they all seem to say, you know, I didn't really know him. All kind of videos, I remember I listened to about six, seven different podcasters to hear what they're saying about Kevin, see if they're generally sad that the brother died and passed on. Yeah? And, uh, you know, I don't, I mean, Fitch, they were solemn to a, to a degree. But I think the only one who was, um, you know, really kind of sad or, what's a different way to put it? Uh, let me see. Is it impartial? Because, like I say, I think a lot of these people, you know, they're kind of happy that Kevin's dead because the opposition's gone. Yeah. Now Kevin's gone. It's all about them again. Now, now they're gonna start making the the money again. They're gonna get the super chats. They're gonna get the the cash apps. Yeah. Their views will go back high. So I know, you know, they're not they're not they're not sad at all. Yeah. But um, when I listened to ABL, Anthony Brian Logan, he, he definitely seemed to be genuine and solemn. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. He seemed to be genuine, genuine about, you know, Kevin's passing. Yeah? Like I said, yeah, you know, Trey, Terrain, Star, that is foul, man. That nigga's foul, man. It's foul, man. He said some bad things. I mean, to someone he's never even met. And the man even ain't even, to put it in, he would call you. He didn't even be cremated or buried yet. You know, we're saying the most wicked things, you know? 
As far as I know, Kevin had uh, two daughters. He's got a daughter, he's got a mother, yeah? And he's saying the most wicked, evil things and laughing his head off. He's got issues. Stuff's got issues, bro. Yeah? Yeah. But what I like here, yeah, I think, you know, you know, Kevin had a nice image, yeah? Kevin had a nice, clean-cut image. And a lot of people didn't like that, yeah? It's like, how dare this black man act sophisticated? Yeah? But he also spoke about, you know, white collar and blue collar. He was a blue collar worker. Yeah? He done manual jobs. And then he rose to the level of being, or the corporate level, where in corporate level, you know, wearing white shirts. Yeah? Being sophisticated. But he was a blue collar worker. And he never stopped, you know, being respectful to blue collar workers. Yeah? That was one of his arguments when he was saying to these women about your single, your your um, independent woman. He was saying, "Well, what happens if the sewer breaks? Who's going to fix that?" They've got no answer. What happens if the plumber? If you need a plumber, if you need a plumber, if you need an electrician, yeah, who's going to do that? Yeah, well, these single single women, independent women are, you know, they're just uh, convinced that. You know, they can cope with everything on their own. I mean, I saw this video, yeah? I don't know how this happened. I just saw a video on Instagram, yeah? You had two black women in the kitchen. And uh, they were cooking. It was an electric cooker. And all of a sudden, this cooker just shot out. It just shot out. Yeah? And they were lucky not to be seriously harmed or even killed by this cooker. It just shot out. And that's what I thought, yeah? I mean, I don't know what happened, but I'm thinking... Oh, what's Thinking, you know, these women, yeah? They set up home together. They don't really know how to wire the cooker, but they just kind of set up the cooker. And they didn't do it right, and it blew up, man. I mean, you had a big, not a little slim cooker, I mean, some big industrial looking cooker just shut out from the wall. Wow, dangerous, yeah? So you would say to them, who's gonna fix this? Who's gonna fix that? Who's gonna lift that? Who's gonna lift that? Well, like women are oblivious of those things, yeah? No, they're, they're oblivious of how everything works. They just think, well, I'll call, yeah, somebody can fix it, I've got money, whatever the case may be, yeah? So let's go back to the image, yeah? I think, you know, Kevin Samuels, you know, one of the most important roles for me is his, his image, you know, for these youngsters, yeah? Because we're living in a in an era now where everything negative is being promoted, yeah? Everyone's covered in tattoos, yeah? Even on your face, you've got a tattoo, yeah? So, you know, Kevin showing young black men, or any young man, yeah? That, you know, you know you can make it in a corporate way, yeah? You don't have to be a gangster, you don't have to be a thug. You don't have to be a criminal, you don't have to carry a gun, you don't have to kill someone. You can be polite and courteous, yeah? Dress well, still get girls, yeah? Make money, be sophisticated. One time he was in the video, he was driving around in his car. I don't think he quite showed it, but it looked really good. Might even have been a Bentley or something. It had light, light brown, beige, leather seats, he was driving, yeah, it was high quality, high value, whatever you want to call it, yeah. They got pinky ranks, yeah, driving, sophisticated, yeah, cologne, yeah. So that's the image you show in young black men, yeah. You, know, you don't have to be a criminal, you don't have to be a thief, you don't have to be a murderer, you don't have to be planning a heist, yeah. 
I was a blue collar worker, now I became corporate. Yeah? And uh, yeah, like when I first, uh, when he first came up and was talking all this stuff about money, yeah, I was let me see if I can Google this guy and see what he's worth. Yeah? So I Googled, it says he's worth 11 million. Yeah? I was like, yeah, this brother's for real. This nigga's for real. This dude really got this money. Yeah? Because that's what that was my argument, yeah? That was my argument. I was saying, you know, because I don't I just don't trust everything, yeah. So when he came on the scene he was talking about this money, I was I was like, well then if he's got all his money, why is the nigga on YouTube begging, demanding for super chats? So that's why I Googled. So I Googled it. And like I said, it was worth eleven million. I was like, yeah, respect, man. This dude's really got this money. And that's one of the things, yeah? When he died, they were saying, oh, he was broke. Yeah, some arsehole done a video. He, he didn't even have a thousand pounds. The apartment was in someone else's name. He didn't have the money, yeah? So I started Googling again, Kevin Samuel's estimated worth. And a few videos came up saying uh, five million plus, yeah? He definitely had five million plus dollars, yeah? So black people are so evil, man. A black man comes up and he makes it. Instead of being happy for him, they want to destroy him, mash him up, bring him down. Yeah? And that's that's what's holding us back. Yeah? I was growing up now. You know, I thought all our issues in the black community came from, you know, racism. But as I've grown up, I've seen it's not, man. Yeah? Yeah, there's racism, yeah. But it's us. We are keeping each other down. That's the problem, yeah? So instead of being happy that this black man has, you know, gone up high and he's made something of himself and he's famous, yeah? And now our children have someone to to follow and copy. They're wishing him the worst. They're dancing on his grave, yeah? Wishing, saying the most wicked, evil thing, yeah? It's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. And yeah, no young black boys they have this they have another image now. Yeah, not somebody smoking drugs, yeah, smoking weed, talking rubbish, covered in tattoos, yeah. And that's one thing that I have to say, yeah. That's what I like about Snoop Dogg, yeah. Yeah, Snoop Dogg came up, whatever, yeah. But now, you know, Snoop Dogg talks about NFTs, he talks about cryptocurrencies, yeah? He's very important in this, uh, in the emergence of cryptocurrencies, yeah? And, you know, people whose level he's not supposed to be on now want to be in the company of Snoop Dogg, yeah? Because he's talking about cryptocurrencies and banking, yeah? That's why I like Snoop Dogg. Yeah, he's evolved. He's, he's come to a high level. Yeah, and he's bringing respect. So that's what the young youngsters have to watch. Yeah, because like I said, there's something going on where you know they just want the youngsters to do silly stuff. Yeah. Drugs, tattoos, now they've got this new craze. They're all flinging themselves. <laughs> they're all flicking themselves all over the place. Like they don't care about their life. It's ridiculous. Have you seen what they're doing? Like, you know, if you miss, it's not oops, you're dead. You're in a fucking wheelchair. <laughs> There's some evil stuff out there, man. To try to sell, send the youngsters the, the wrong way, yeah? That's what I'm saying, yeah? Uh, Kevin's giving these youngsters. How many young boys are watching him now? Yeah, you got all, I know you've passed now, but you've got all those videos there. They can watch that. And to some of those people who, you know, they don't know, they haven't got a, a father figure, now they can watch Kevin Samuels. Yeah? And say, yeah, when I grow up, that's how I want to be. He's given them that image now. Yeah? That's a good image for you, you youngsters to be watching and, and copying. Yeah? Walking around always smoking weed, yeah. You want to buy a gun now? Kevin Samuels is giving them a good image to follow and copy. 
Yeah, that's wonderful. I've covered, I've covered most of the things I was going to say anyway. Yeah? But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, what's really emerged from that, though, you know, his death is that, you see that, um, you know, there's certain forces in the black community that don't want the black community, you know, to evolve and go higher. You know, we're lucky to have Kevin Samuels. We're lucky to have this guy come along. Yeah? We're lucky to have this guy come along with this clean image. Yeah? So you can make money. Yeah, you can make money. You can make money online. You can have a show like mine. You can be, you know, you can be corporate and you can still get money. And I like when you get these uh, people like him who speak on a boardroom level. I mean, I mean, sometimes he got angry. I like when he get angry and he would say, who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Yeah? Who the fuck you think you're talking to? Yeah? <laughs> That's a reminder sometimes, you know, because I'm like boardroom level. I'm not I'm not punk. You know what I mean? Yeah? Because he's boardroom level, you're not a punk, yeah? Beads, soap. This soap is exquisite. Yeah, it's luxe. It's got this kind of uh, what's that? Floral, is it? It's kind of floral smell. Yeah. So you just have to remind them. Just because he, he likes beads and he likes exquisite smelling soap, he's not a punk. Who the fuck you think you're talking to? Yeah? Yeah, I can't believe it, man. He's gone. Age 56. There was a lot of uh, confusion about his age, too. Some of them said he was born on May the 13th. May the 13th. And he was 53, yeah, but more, more of the video seemed to say was 56, yeah, it was 56. I mean, maybe he, maybe he used two, he used two birthdays, yeah, so he used one where he looks, I want people to think that he's younger than what he really was, but I think he was 56, I think his mother confirmed he was 56. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, I just I just can't believe it. I mean I don't know him. Yeah. But I, I I put some comments on the videos, yeah? And I know that he saw it. I put one comment one time, yeah? put a comment one time I completely forgot about it and maybe about three months later you know he kind of spoke on this comment and I think it was you know I mean he read what I said but I don't know I don't know if I should even speak on that well, let me try and be diplomatic how I phrase this basically what I said is you got all these black women running around saying they don't need a man and they're independent, they don't need no man they're independent. I said, what group of black men were running around and say, oh, we're independent men and we don't need no woman? What would people say? Straight away they say, you're, you're gay, you're homosexual. Well, how comes no one ain't saying this about black women when they're saying, we don't need no men? We don't need, oh, we don't need no men, we're independent women. <clears throat> how comes no one ain't thinking, well, if you don't want a man around, you must be Whatever you want to call it. The 
because I've got to use my language carefully. Yeah? Because I don't want the video to get flagged. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah? And then he picked up on that. He was like more or less word for word. Yeah? You know what I mean? Like, why are they so happy to be independent? It's ridiculous. And so happy that they raised their children on their own. Why don't they want their children to have a father around? Yeah? Now, you know, I know, you know, this really started deeply in the 70s. Yeah? L Lyndon Baines Johnson, LBJ. Lyndon Baines Johnson, yeah. They started this, his administration started this thing about getting the black men out of the home. You know, get the black men out of the home, but offer the black women some money. Yeah, but they must get the black men out of the home. Yeah. And the purpose of that was they knew that the black race would be full to bits. If there's no male figure around, yeah, the race would fall to bits. And that was the plan. And that's exactly where we are today. They got the black man out of the home. Yeah. And uh, we know the rest, isn't it? I mean, like some of the things I'm seeing, yeah? Some things I'm seeing, like I was watching this video and they're driving along on motorbikes and they said something like, like they're moonwalking or something. No, not on a motor, motor, motorbike, on an ATV uh, quad bike and they're doing wheelie. <laughs> there's no respect for nobody. Like if they have an accident and kill someone, oh well, that's how it goes. Niggas die every day be that kind of attitude, yeah. They're on this quad, they're doing a wheelie, the number plate, the back of the the, the, the quad is on the scraping on the floor, the hand is on the floor. I saw a bike of a video on like a kind of a, a scrambler, a trials bike, and then they're riding. <laughs> The feet are sliding along the floor. Oh, I don't know what to say. Yeah? And that's what I'm saying. Kevin Zamrels, his image and his existence, you know, completely contradicts everything that's being pushed now as being cool and good and normal. Yeah? Because you follow all this nonsense. You go, you go into the cemetery, you go into prison, you're going to ruin your life. Yeah? Like, say, for instance, now you're, you're, you're riding along. So you could you could accidentally kill somebody, you could kill a child, you could you know what I mean? You kill yourself, yeah? But one thing for sure, you know, you're riding and there's cameras everywhere, so you can't even dispute people riding the bike like a maniac. I mean so the way so the way some of these people are riding this bike, doing wheelies and yeah? And they're doing the same things so on bicycles now. Yeah, they're riding the bicycle, they're coming off, they're doing, they're putting their feet here, they're swerving, they don't respect nobody, they're riding in the, in the, in the lane, the opposite lane, they shouldn't be in, yeah? And they kill someone, ah, fuck that nigga, man. Fuck that dude, man. You know, it's like extreme narcissism, yeah? So what I'm saying now, you know, you do something, the police stop you, you go to court, and then you got that mm -hmm. criminal record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you might not care when you're in your teens, but when you get into your twenties and your thirties and you need to get a job and that's on your criminal record, you're you're fucked, you're finished. Yeah, that's what I'm saying now. You know, Kevin Samuel's got this image, very positive and clean, and that's what the youngsters need to follow. Now I know, you know, not all of the youngsters will follow that, but some of them will, because you know, some of these 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 youngsters they don't have a father figure around. There's no male father figure in the household. Yeah? There's no man around, like I said. Yeah, when I listened to Alex Jones, Alex Jones said they would go to his black friend's house and there was never a man around. There was never a man around. Yeah? Now we arrive at this situation now, yeah, where like black men and black women are becoming separate. Yeah, and that's another thing that pissed them off, yeah? The woman Kevin Kevin was with when he died wasn't black. So that pissed them off too. Some kind of Hispanic lady. 
Yeah? That pissed them off too. And they like, you know, I saw many videos. They said, oh, they were dancing on his grave. They were happy. They were happy the brother died. <laughs> it's so wicked, so evil. It's a shame. It's a shame. Yeah? Like I said, yeah. And then we were lucky to have had him. You know, and most importantly, you know, his mother was probably proud of him. Yeah? He made his mother proud. Yeah? He got two daughters. His daughters were proud of their dad. Yeah, and he bucked the sister. Yeah, we were just supposed to be a loser. But the thing is, there's a lot of black people doing well, but you know, it's not it's not shown. I stumbled on a video the other day. Corporate black people, rich black people. One guy was billed as the black Donald Trump. Yeah. Dude was rich. Yeah. He's what you call biracial. His mother's white, his father's black, but he's still black, yeah? And a gorgeous looking kind of Russian model kind of girl. What did he say? Where did you meet her? Oh, she was jaywalking. That sounds bad, but maybe in America. Anyway, he said she was jaywalking, yeah? So they were a couple now, but then the other people in the video, yeah, they were doing good thing. One guy had a kind of a uh, internet situation yeah i mean online business shopping situation but it was proper though yeah it wasn't like how i used to do my thing yeah proper like a warehouse situation and he employed staff yeah he employed black people yeah he was had his, it was a young guy just in his 30s there was another black lady intelligent had a business yeah so you know then also from watching Mawa, yeah, I am Mawa show, he went to a neighborhood of just rich black people. Yeah, like the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, you know, some street with just massive mansion houses on one side of the road, massive, and the driveways enormous. Yeah. So like I say, there are black positive people, rich people, but they're just not being shown. Yeah. They want to show negative things. And I'll tell this story. Yeah. It was in 2009. I, was, I went to Bangkok. Yeah. I'm on my own. I'm on my own. Yeah. So I walk into a restaurant. <laughs> I walk into a beautiful restaurant. Like this restaurant is like somehow it's built on a river. Yeah. So a river's flowing under. I don't know. There's some river situation. So I'm sitting down, walking to the restaurant, yeah? I sit down, I've got a menu in my hand. I look up, the people are, the people are quaking in their boots, bruv. <laughs> so I got up, I went, I said, I said, it's a restaurant, isn't it? I said, yes. I said, I'm allowed to order food, aren't I? She said, yes, yes. So I said, what's wrong? They were fucking scared. One black man walked in on his own, and the woman was literally physically shaking. And it's because all, all this Hollywood garbage they're showing. Yeah? Just negative things. So when they see you, they're fucking scared. And that's what that's what Louis Farrakhan said. They deliberately do this. They just portray a bad Yeah? So everywhere you go in the world, yeah, they can only think something negative. Yeah? You must be bad, you must be a criminal. I mean I was on my own. I don't smoking, wasn't drinking, nothing, just on my own. Went in a restaurant, I sat down, the woman was quivering and shaking. But when I spoke to her, she was okay. Yeah, she told me. Uh, yeah, she was, well, She went to France, she used to live in France, she used to do business in France. I said, did you ever go to London? She said, no, I never went there, but I was in France. And she was okay. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Yeah, that's all I can say, yeah. Like Kevin Samuel's done something good, yeah? Now his legacy is, has to be, you know, he's a positive black man, he was successful, he was a blue collar worker, he became corporate, he was a success, yeah? He was rich. They wanted to say he was broke, he died broke, they couldn't do that. 
Yeah, he could not say he was broke, he died broke. He died with five million plus dollars. Yeah? His daughters or whoever will get the money, the man was a success, yeah? So I think we need to put respect on this man's name and we need more black men to be like Kevin Samuels, yeah? That's the image we need, yeah? Oh, 